Guys, welcome to a classic movie review of 1973's The Day of the Jackal, starring Edward Fox, Michael Lonsdale and Cyril Cusack. Now, this was directed by Fred Zinnemann and is based on Frederick Forsyth's acclaimed novel, uh, and it's the tense tale of a professional assassin, codenamed Jackal, who's hired by a group of resentful military veterans to kill President Charles de Gaulle uh, in the aftermath of France allowing Algeria's independence. Now, this is a movie that I've warmed to over time, as when I viewed it at a bit of a younger age, I felt it was quite cold and quite clinical, but after a few decades of watching over-the-top action and CGI silliness, I've come to appreciate its almost docudrama-like attention to detail. Uh, if you were to assassinate the most closely guarded man in the world, what preparation would be needed and what lengths would you go to to stay ahead of the authorities? That's not to say, though, that it's meticulous to the point of dullness. Uh, this is one of the great political paranoid thrillers of the 1970s, so let's take a look. You must understand that this is a once-in-a-lifetime job. Whoever does it can never work again. How much do you want? Half a million. What? In cash. Half in advance and half in completion. Half a million francs? Dollars. Are you mad? Consider so, Dave the Jackal is set in 1963 and is the fictional what-if movie that takes the attempted real-life assassination uh, on French President Charles de Gaulle in 1962 uh, by the OAS, uh, the French Secret Army Organisation, and asks what if the organisation tried again, uh, but this time hired a British assassin going by the codename of the Jackal, played here by Edward Fox, and pay half a million dollars to get the job done. Uh, and this film is essentially the preparations carried out in order to complete the job, uh, whilst we cut back and forth between this and attempts to uncover the conspiracy uh, and track him down. You have an Englishman. Then Duggan's staying here. Where is he? Mr. Duggan's gone, sir. He left this morning, just after 11. Now, like many of my favourite paranoid thrillers of the late 60s and the 70s, uh, this isn't car chases or foot chases and explosions every 15 minutes. This replaces those things with dramatic tension, um, close calls and skin of your teeth escapes. And we'll chat about how great Fox is in these scenes in a few moments. But I feel there's a fascination watching him as he assembles the components of his plan. When he meets Cyril Cusack's gunsmith, there's a near fetishistic manner in how he examines the bespoke rifle parts he's ordered and watch how effortlessly Fox uh, shifts between straight talking business uh, to fake laughter and onto brute force when a forger makes the mistake of attempting to blackmail him. Now, The Day of the Jackal has an almost anti-Bond feeling to it, a dark 007, if you like. Edward Fox's well-groomed and immaculately tailored assassin just wandering around European locations, uh, seducing women in order to avoid the authorities. And of course, whenever it appears that someone might be at risk to his mission or to his identity, he just calmly kills them because that's what he's getting paid for. Uh, it's all strictly business. And speaking of which, there's also some great attention to detail on the other side of the law, highlighting the amount of sometimes laborious work and sometimes dirty work that goes into tracking down a guy who's a ghost, essentially. Um, especially in some awesome moments that sees one of the villainous architects of the plan being captured and, after being brutally tortured, revealing key information that jeopardises the Jackal's work. Now, I mentioned the Bondian, if you like, aspects of some of this movie, and I love that on one side we have the suave and sleek professionalism of the Jackal and his Euro chic charisma, and then on the other side uh, there's this contrast with the dullness and the greyness uh, of these tired looking, run down, shabby middle aged men who are trying to stop him. <laughs> and I like Michael Lonsdale here as the police inspector. Uh, Lonsdale was in so many great movies, but many will know him best as Hugo Drax, uh, 007's adversary in 1979's Moonraker. Uh, anyway, here he starts as a guy who's just doing his job um, a quite underwhelming character but of course will go on to be a pivotal figure in the movie's events now even though history will tip you off about how successful the assassination attempt at the center of this plot will be i'm still quite hesitant to talk too much about plot specifics here even though it's based on a 1971 best-selling book uh, which was poorly remade in 1997 as a substandard bruce willis movie and has been fashioned into a peacock original tv series but it's still better to go in a little bit cold and discover what director Fred Zinnemann has in store. Now, Austrian-born Zinnemann, of course, the architect of several masterworks, such as Act of Violence, High Noon, and From Here to Eternity. 
Now, whilst you're watching Day of the Jackal, it'll be no shock to note that Zinnemann trained in documentary films. And you can see that social realist style here, even in films like High Noon and A Man for All Seasons. Uh, he hadn't made a movie in about six or seven years when he was offered this film. And he only made a couple afterwards. Uh, Zinnemann was a casualty, ultimately, of the new Hollywood way and the demise of the studio system. Anyway, Zinnemann had Jean Tournier as his cinematographer, who I only know from uh, Moonraker and The Train, I think. But yeah, the whole look of the thing, I think, helps sell the realism and the matter-of-fact nature of it all. Uh, it's unpretentious. It doesn't try to look uh, glamorous or have flashy visual effects or loud action scenes. It's just a well-made film directed with a deliberate restraint. Yeah, and the fact that's interesting here is that there's no music soundtrack after the opening, uh, just background sounds and background music, something that also helps add to the realism. So as well as the suave and slippery fox and the tenacious Michael Lonsdale, look out for a young Derek Jacobi, uh, Terence Alexander, uh, Tony Britton and a host of other character actors. So ultimately, The Day of the Jackal Canon does stand proudly alongside some of the great thrillers of the 1970s. I think Three Days of the Condor, Marathon Man and The Parallax View. Uh, even though some may argue across its two hour and 20 minute runtime, it's more drama than thriller. Uh, it's a clinical fusion of fact and fiction. Uh, it makes us as curious about the process of a professional killer as it does about the good guys tasked with stopping him. Go check it out. This job depends on absolute secrecy. No notes must be kept. If any one of you is captured, I shall feel free to call it off. I suggest you stay in a safe place under guard until the work is done. Agreed? Agreed.